Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Eagle Labs event. Um, my name is Luca Forte. I'm part of the uh, Eagle Labs uh, external engagement team uh, that helps sort of put together deliver programs and events such as this. So thank you for joining us today. Um, we have a great session lined up for you, which we will brief, uh, quickly get into. Um, quick couple of bits of housekeeping before we do. Um, we have asked uh, Katie to join us today to provide some tips and tricks on leadership readiness. Um, the topics discussed are an overview of options for you to think about to help you with research and business decisions that aren't intended as recommendations or advice. Remember as well that your business has its own individual circumstances. The statements of views expressed may not be applicable or suitable for your business. So as I mentioned, uh, Katie has joined us today. So we've been joined by Katie Tunster from Horizon 37, who is a leadership partner there. So um, we've got lots to dig into and lots of uh, very interesting topics to bring up. So um, we'll move into that in just a second. Um, to make the most of this session today, we uh, have asked you to join a platform called Vbox. So that is a Q&A platform um, for you to post any questions of your own, comments of your own whilst we're going through this session. Katie's going to deliver a bit of a, um, a presentation for us and give us lots of food before, and then we'll have a bit of a Q&A at the end. So please make the most of that whilst we're going through this, um, this session today. Um, I think we've got lots lined up for coming up in, in Eagle Lab, so lots of programs, lots of events. So please make sure um, after this session as well, you go and check out labs.uk.barclays. Um, so that's, that's enough from me. Uh, Katie, I'm going to hand over to you now. Thank you, Luca. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for coming along. I'm Katie Tunster, and I'm part of the Leadership Readiness Research Team, uh, which was the Cranfield School of Management and Horizon 37. I'm also a, one of the leadership partners at Horizon 37, um, and we are dedicated to leadership in growth and change. The big question we ask is, are you ready to lead the growth of your business? And I believe that is a major reason why most of you have come along today. Um, the world needs innovative small businesses like yours, and we believe that you can change the world. That's how ambitious we are. But only one in 25 startups manages to scale past 50 people. So odds are pretty bad. What are you going to do about it? Well, well done. You've turned up. That is an, an excellent, an excellent step. And we're really pleased to have you here. Now, I've been told by Luca that Barclays has a very strict rule on no jokes. Right. But Luke has negotiated this to the point that I'm allowed to be witty, sparkly and witty. Right. <laughs> He's nervous. So what I did is I spent all morning searching for how to be witty online. And I thought I was trying to be really up to date. So I used ChatGDP. And after about an hour or so, to, you know, don't else get really sucked into ChatGDP. But anyway, I realized that I'd accidentally got it wrong um, and accidentally was using thesaurus mode. So I was naturally vexed, disappointed, upset and deflated. <laughs> <laughs> if you like my jokes, Luca, thank you very much. <laughs> no you know, problem. Please like emoji in the chat. That's acceptable. We're fine. That's it. Have I passed the mark? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> okay. So you can you can you can interact with us in the chat. We can't see you. Um, but that would be wonderful if you give me a nice emoji. That always makes me feel motivated. Uh, the jokes don't really get any better. Um, sorry, the wit doesn't get any better. Not breaking any rules. OK, right to the subject at hand, why we're here. So um, it's all about getting ready your, for your leadership in a very targeted way to scale your business, to scale your business and get results. So I have a question for you. Could you write down in the chat if you want, but on a piece of paper, whatever, your precise results that you need to achieve in your business in the next 12 months? Uh, and I invite you to be quite interactive in this and have a go actually do that. And I see Luke's going to do it. You might find that you're writing down some things that are actually outcomes. So these are the valuable things in their own right. Results like achieving technological milestones or a particular commercial goal or maybe an exit or maybe achieving, achieving the mission or some elements of it. Right. You might also find yourself writing down things that are enablers. They're very important as well, but not results on their own. So think about things that might be really important to get right in your business to succeed. Things like fast product iteration, things like good market access, highly motivated people. And I want to always start every consideration about any investment you should make as a small business. And today it's about the effort to put into leadership. I want to start always by thinking about 
results. Zero compromise on knowing what the results are that you want to achieve. So let's assume everybody's done that. If you're watching the video, you can pause and think about that a little bit more. Um, so for those of you who are live, on we go. Next question. Um, do we know why leadership matters? And with working definition here that I, I'm not going to go into this in detail, but we're generating positive results through others. So that's quite an important um, definition. It's not doing. Founders and innovators are very good at doing. So this is about the leadership results that you're trying to achieve. And I'd also like you to have a really good think about what that looks like. So what, what is what is actually going to make the difference? What matters in leadership in your business? Um, and you'll pick up a theme through the whole of today. It's about deprioritization. I was actually trying to work out a witty joke about, um, you know, you, you take away lots from these, these seminars, right? You get lots of takeaways. And, and this is more taking off things from your plate. And I had an idea about making a joke about giving me some donuts, taking it off your plate. But anyway, I decided not to go there. This is as confusing as Lucas' face is showing me. The point is, a lot of today is about what you don't need to do and what you cannot waste your time on. And I, and I really think that's so important and so refreshing when you're trying to lead a business, not to just feel like you have to do everything. So that's my commitment today. Now, there are gazillions of things you could do. Have you thought about any? So um, perhaps you go, oh, I need to master my poker face for a really good commercial negotiation. That's one thing I'm going to work on. You might think, uh, oh, no, 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 I know what we need. We, our whole leadership team needs more gravitas, more presence and impact. Um, it might be that you go, oh, what we need is a whole program of meditation. Everyone in our business needs to get to lunchtime meditation sessions and we all become more zen. It might be that you need some super clever social chat platform that is going to change the way that you're culture develops and your impact right now uh, of course who knows if any of these things are going to be the right things for your business or not um i want to ask another question here um and uh, please feel free to post in the chat here anyone please who has a lot of spare time just give a little thumbs up in the chat now just looking for the thousands of thumbs up we're expecting ah uh, tumbleweed none okay so obviously we don't really have um, people here who have lots of spare time on their hands and you're scaling businesses so that's not the situation so whilst it can be quite fashionable to invest in this comprehensive program we don't want to do that and I want to read you something here um, about this so this this is from a, a, a little t um, book called leadership don't waste your time which is a, a, a good way to think about <laughs> just especially if you just raise investment, what you shouldn't shouldn't be doing. So here we go. There are thousands of ways to lead and thousands of interventions to choose from in the quest to improve leadership in the business. You don't have the time. You have a world changing mission and a load of tough promises to deliver sometimes for investors. You cannot do everything. If you try to, then deprioritization will happen by accident, usually accompanied by a dose of overwhelm. So only work on the things that directly impact your business results. So there you go. Target the gaps. That's what we're going to look at. And we are now going to consider what you need to know to be able to make those deprioritizations in practice every day. So um, I want to ask you another question here. What's the sufficient and necessary insight for you to be able to prioritize and deprioritize your leadership in your business? I'm guessing that probably half the people here would be wild guesser tendency. You know, your tendency is to just guess wildly, right? Don't need any insight. No insight is sufficient, right? And then some of you might be more in the camp of overanalyzer, right? You know which one you are. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to make a judgment on that, of course. Whichever one your poison is, please nudge towards the middle now. It's the necessary sufficient insight. Um, and I'm going to help you now to accelerate your practical deprioritization by sharing some of the findings from this research program that we mentioned at the beginning. OK, so um, I don't know. Can we... James, can we share? That? Yes, thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks. Um, so I was a member of this team here, the um, this joint Cranfield and Horizon 2017. Um, and I myself conducted around 35 of the deep structured interviews. And then as a team, we synthesized and analyzed the findings. Um, there are four of us in the team. Um, so what we what we found, luckily, it's nice and simple. It boils down to there being four components of leadership that matter above all. 
Um, in my view, these are sort of 80% of the value. Over the last year, I've probably upped the importance of decision making from having worked with, I think we worked with 56 scale up companies last year. And I think decision making possibly, in my opinion, should sneak into the top. But anyway, it, it's very simple. These four things, if you get these right, you've got a pretty good chance of succeeding in the scale up. So we've got creating culture, setting direction, managing performance and feedback, specifically giving and receiving great feedback. Um, and by the way, you should look at all 18 components because there are 18 components that we've identified and they could add value. But whatever you do, please don't try to do them all. <laughs> so it's all about trying to work out which will have the disproportionate effect. So um, the other thing I, I should point, so that's a little bit further into the research, um, is that it's not a linear increase in demands on leadership. So if we have a look at the next slide, thank you, Alaria. This is the leadership proliferation threshold thesis. Now, basically, um, let me decide, let me break this down for you. As a business grows, so do the demands on leadership, but it's not linear. And you get these inflection points where the business risk gets really big very suddenly if you can't stay ahead of the curve. The pressure gets really high and the leaders need to move quickly. Now, this one here that we examined in this research, um, you can see that marked on there called the LPT, like, snazzy name. Um, we, we, we documented this and we analysed what you need to do to stay ahead of the curve. Um, we often get asked the question of why, why, why is this point happening? And it, we have looked at this in a speculative way in the research. So, for example, you don't seem to be able to count on bilateral chats to make strategic alignment. You, know, you haven't got mates being able to just talk about everything to make sure everyone's on the same page. Sometimes at this kind of scale, you can bit, like, see factions start to form, especially between um, highly technical people and commercial people or between engineering and physics or you know the, the different groups where they start to have a, a lack of sometimes a lack of respect at least a lack of understanding or regard for each other um, and sometimes decision making can become a bit, bit dispersed and difficult to do so that all these things can start to go wrong at this point but I know what you've come along to hear about today is not why, it's to hear about when this happens and what to do about it. Um, you'll notice on the x-axis label here, we have headcount, right? And obviously there's many, many ways of measuring the maturity of a business. Um, and in the research, we considered a lot of different controlling variables here to look at um, the impact on leadership demands. And we looked at things like um, revenue, investment raised, market traction, regulatory approval, IP creation, and obviously sector by sector, there's some different measures of business maturity. Headcount seems to be the one that is the strongest indicator of changes in demand on leadership. And when we think this inflection point ramp, ramp up happens, our best estimate from the research is 40, 40 people. And that has been validated with a whole series of um, focus groups and events that we have had since then, um, getting getting more input. And obviously, you could nuance this sector by sector and look at all sorts of mitigating circumstances, which we are not here to do today. This is not an academic lecture. This is a practical impact seminar. So what I thought I could do for you, um, if we, we can take away the slides now, um, is I would bring to life some of the stories that we've seen um, about the big wins in each of these four areas. And I'll bring it to life. And what I suggest you do to get the maximum value from your investment in hearing this, this work is to jot down what you think could be the opportunities for your unique business. What do you think are going to be the things that shift the needle for you? So I'll go through them one by one. Please feel free to, to throw things in, into the chat as questions, um, which I can address either during or, or at the end. I think probably at the end, right, Luca? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so remember we've got culture, setting direction, performance management and feedback. So first one, culture. What do we know about culture? Well, the first thing is that there is no single correct culture. Uh, I mean, that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Um, but what we do know is there are some hallmarks of the ones that seem to be effective in catalyzing growth. So the first is that they're consistent. Um, so there's integrity, 
in the members of the business that they do what they say they will, whatever that is. And you can rely on that being consistent. Um, the second thing we see is that they are exclusive of what is not tolerated. So we've all got personal preferences and, and businesses start to create norms about what is not OK. Right. There's lots of models you can use to, to work this out. Overton Windows, quite good, things like that. But if you can understand in a culture, this is this is something we don't tolerate and we actually don't. That means it's played through in promotion decisions, reward decisions, firing decisions. That seems to be really important as well. Um, and then the third hallmark, if you like, is being inclusive of healthy difference. So we're exclusive of what we don't want. And then we are inclusive of healthy difference. And this is this is a real subtle thing. We're not accidentally exclusive. So sometimes we exclude things that we actually are just some lazy proxy for something we really care about. And that seems to be a really important thing that healthy, health, that effective culture includes healthy difference on purpose. Um, and it seems to be quite important to create deliberately your culture. So I can tell you a story about a, a, a customer here who's called Elon. <laughs> I made a fake name. Um, so what Elon found in his business was um, that he had a lot of passionate people, proper commitment to world impact and a lot of really clever academics. So on the face of it, absolutely the business. But what was happening to everyone's great frustration was deadlines were getting missed a lot. And Elon says, oh, I am just feeling awful because I have to keep apologising to all these really clever people that they're having to do boring customer work. And it's really it's really stressing me out. They, they don't want to do the debugging. I had them I had them stay up uh, late and do this. And I, and I said such a major thank you. And I'm so sorry that you're having to do this because I know that you're really clever and could be doing much more interesting, creative stuff, invention. Um, now, the realisation was, that, of course, that's not walking the walk about the culture that they want, which is commercialization and, com and customer focus. So Elon and his exec team decided to shift their entire language and focus. Uh, they wanted to turn it around so that the sexiest work was no longer the intellectual genius breakthrough breakthroughs, but it was about customer delight. And that was a really important for him. His particular business was to shift the culture to be genuinely customer focused, it being all about the customer in the market. And I mean, most custom, most companies would say that. Right. But when it really comes down to it, are you saying, oh, nice one for pulling an all nighter? That's a genius. And you think you've just invented when actually that's disconnected with the customer. So uh, in Elon's case, um, in, in to give you the full picture, we did actually experience two very, very clever, highly qualified people huff quit in the face of this shift, right? And that was pretty hard to swallow at the time. But quite quickly, the business realized that they were not the right people in this new commercializing phase. And the culture was a reflection of what the business needed. So it was actually the right decision for those two people to go. And the rest were really bought into the innovation in Elon's business, really landing in the world. So if that story resonates with you, good. It's obviously one unique situation. But I wanted to maybe flag a few of the more broadly, the big challenges that you might face that could be similar to Elon or not in the area of culture. So um, the first is really look out for those different subcultures developing in your team as you grow. So mistrust, confusion, conflict constant appeasing. That's probably the first thing that starts to emerge as you near the leadership proliferation threshold. There's also a, another thing that's a very big red flag, which is if you see yourself or any of your, your fellow leaders trying to dictate culture or the board, um, it, dictate how it should be. Culture cannot happen top down. You cannot make people feel a certain culture if they don't want to and especially not if you're also somehow opting out from some of it yourself so uh, you know I am um, that's, that's an important one to look at um there's a couple of other things one is experts and I do that with a little quote thing is experts telling you that there's this one size fits cult fits all culture and it needs to look just like this right because the culture needs to match your vision your goals your priorities and what works for one company could be entirely different for another and this 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 is no more pronounced than things around 
expectations on um, how you hold people to account when you what your flexible working policies are. There's there's so much that needs to just be considered for your business with what you're trying to achieve. Um, and then the last thing, which is massive red flag, is if you start to see cynicism and lack of engagement. So you've got company values, but everyone just sees them as generic, meaningless words. So if you've got any of those things going on, don't stress. You are where you are. <laughs> but there's an opportunity to make a change. And please don't underestimate the huge effort that successful leaders do actually put into this, um, into, make, into creating a, a ground up culture that really seems to work for the people in the business. I got a top tip for you. If you are now thinking you're going to invest in culture, then do this one thing. Get your phone right now. Don't get distracted in the vortex of emails. But <laughs> stay with me. But text one or two people to ask, what three words do you think describe our culture? And I'd recommend that you ask a cross section, peers, reports, board, exec, contractors, suppliers, and ask more than two or three people. But asking that question, really just simply and straightforward, you'll really then start to understand what your starting point is. Um, and that's really essential. Your culture is going to have arisen organically. And of course, you're doing something right, or you wouldn't be where you are. So it's about building on that, understand where you're at, and then changing what's no longer going to serve you for the scaling phase ahead. The other thing you could try is a 10 day culture challenge. I'm a big fan. This is another another reason you can look at it's on our website all these things but the 10 day culture ca challenge is pretty pacey uh you don't have time for a long-winded process just see if you can draft it in 10 days it's a it's a good way you know don't make perfect the enemy of good and get on with it so that is also an option good so ask culture first of the four big priority areas i'm next going to talk about setting direction so this is where most commonly you can see a gap between an inspiring high level purpose that is broadly known and what people actually do. And often that's because there's an insufficient level of detail just below this purpose led thing everybody signed up for. I'm going to tell you a story about another, another customer. This is this is Whitney and her business. <laughs> So uh, Whitney, Whitney comes to us saying, I've got this mishmash of different articulations about what matters. Um, and I'm not sure how much to worry about it, but we've got tons of hard work going on. People are quite frustrated with they're putting so much effort in. They really are. They're trying. Like, I want to acknowledge that. But we're not seem to be all going in the right direction. Actually, my business is littered with MVPs. And we're starting to miss a lot of big milestones. We can't sacrifice pace. Everybody's like sprinting 100 miles an hour, but we're wasting a lot of time. So in Whitney's case, um, she got the exec team together and came up with a really clear articulation of what matters. The specific exercise that they did, which is very simple, was when the, her exec team went practiced articulating the priorities around the room. And then giving each other feedback until they could iterate to one clear message about what the priorities were in her business. It's it's not rocket science at all, but game changing. So um, they did that. And they also then were built on that to set some really clear prioritization criteria. So being able to um, prioritize according to very clear criteria is a really pleasing thing for people who are very, very committed, but not sure what to do. So clarifying that. And then also they got their functional responsibilities and made sure that they all fitted together and added up to the business just right, which was really, really effective. So that's a success story. It's a, a relatively typical example of a, a business that dealt with a lack of um, clear uh, uh, aligned direction. Um, if you relate with any of that, then take action. Um, we're often asked, actually, what is the biggest derailer for scale ups? And it's lack of alignment. <laughs> I'm pretty confident saying that. Um, this is what we've talked about. Now, it's also important, I want you to take one thing away from this well, that it's not just the um, writing down the high level business mission, vision, purpose, direction, however you want to do it. It's that bit below. So um, one thing you could do right now is make sure you can write down that top level in 10 words or less. Have a go. Make sure you can do that. That's essential. And then just check out if the rest of your team would say the same thing. <laughs> um, and then more importantly, think about the functional 
responsibilities below that that will ladder up and how each one is owned, driven and clear. That's all I was going to say about setting direction. Um, so we've looked, uh, just to recap, we've looked at um, culture, we've looked at setting direction. We're now going to move on to the really unpopular one, managing performance. Who loves that? Performance management it has a kind of bad reputation, right, as a, as a function. Um, people generally see it as nasty conversations and getting rid of bad people there. Um, it's partly the reason that a lot of scale up businesses don't really even try. It's a family feel. We really want to respect and support each other. We might be a bit too nice. Things are a bit unsaid. And so sometimes with performance management, it is just the problem is we haven't really done it at all. We haven't tried. We haven't lent into it enough. Um, but as a business is growing, it's important to take to take a grip on this um, or of, I mean, the, the consequences are obvious. Right. Performance goes down. <laughs> um, so I'll give you some of the hallmarks that we found of good performance management. Um, so high expectations is one. Absolutely clear. Robust consequences is another and unambiguous consequences. And then enabling appropriate risk taking and supporting and allowing that. Um, and I a small aside on this, there's a very important bias that often comes in here. Um, and to quote one of our, our customers, I won't say who it is, but recently said, um, I really want more innovation, but they need to get it right first time. So there's there's a real problem with that kind of thing. People go, oh, yeah, innovation, take the risks, take responsibility, do the thing. But what happens if you do it and it's wrong? And there's a thing called resulting bias. So say I take a massive risk, Luca told me I could take a massive risk, and I, and he says, you can tell a rubbish joke. And I tell a rubbish joke, and it truly is rubbish. Maybe I offend someone, right? If Luca had told me, um, I want you to take a risk and tell a rubbish joke, and then he went, your joke was not okay, the result was that you offended someone, then that is inconsistent with the performance management that I require, which would be, he, he's saying to me, you should take this risk. I take the risk, it doesn't pay off. Well done for taking the risk, right? So there's a I think resulting bias is a really important thing to consider here in in performance management. Right. What are you actually judging people on? And is it are you able to disaggregate that from the outcome, which may or may not have had uh, been in their control? OK, don't know why I picked another example about jokes. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'll tell you a story, a performance management story. Um, this is someone called Mark that my name creating is. <laughs> Okay, worse. So Mark, CEO is called Mark. Uh, Mark's committed to creating autonomy. Okay, that's a really important thing. And what he discovered is, oh dear, I'm creating ambiguity. They're close friends sometimes, these things. People are crying out to Mark for clear direction. They're saying, what does good look like? We don't know. At the same time, Mark and some of his fellow leaders are making these sweeping assumptions about what motivates people and some quite random guessing. So when we come in to look at Mark's company, what we're finding is a lot of effort getting wasted on this rule, like no meetings are allowed before 9 a.m. OK, so who made that up? Zoom drinks on Friday night every weekend to celebrate our week's successes. And there was this awful state of the nation meeting that everyone had to come to on a, on a Monday morning. Right. And it was just abysmal. So what... Um, Mark said, said, to be fair, he knew this, right? It just doesn't hit the mark. None of this is none of this is working. So we did some really focused work to understand what do you need to do to motivate people to manage performance in a way that gets the results specific to your business? And that isn't going to be generic. We can't we can't know business by business. But what we can say is if there's a swathe of pointless stuff, let's get rid of that. In Mark's particular business, just to give you a sense, but not to say this is the answer for everybody. He chose that to get better performance, he needed to be much more directive. So when he made a decision, he had to be clear he had made that decision and then leave the detail of the execution to others, but not the decision. And that was a really big change, right? Because he, as I mentioned, he was very into creating autonomy, but that wasn't working unless he gave clear direction at the high level. Another thing they did, I don't know if any of you have tried this, but they had this thing called a coffee bot which was a serendipitous way to make people meet people they didn't know. They got matched by some clever app. Um, again, that's very specific, worked for them. Um, and then the other thing they chose was they wanted presence training. 
and that's what came out of his consultation. A lot of people wanted to do it again, very specific, um, and it worked. Um, I, I know this is probably a, a bit, sounds a bit um, like a risky thing, but one of Mark's team quit as well at this point. Um, uh, but then what happened in that case is the one who quit, the board all said, well, we wondered what the point of that person was anyway. So that's good, because as soon as they got more robust on performance management and expect expecting performance, suddenly it became a bit clearer that certain people were contributing high performance and business results and others weren't. So it's not always and it's not always a bad thing that not everybody stays on board, although it sometimes hurts the soul. OK, so questions for you. Um, for thinking about your um your own business are you creating ownership are you delegating effectively are you setting really high expectations and are you holding people to account you want to be answering yes to all those things at least after you've uh, put all your all, all your changes in um and, they, and so a couple of things to watch out for is are you making excuses for people and are you creating ambiguity like mark so um, I think it's, you know, what we've seen, it's not all about systems and processes, that bit's the easy part. Um, it's about leadership and you showing your commitment to these high expectations and accountability. So there's performance management. I'll go on now to the fourth area, which is about feedback. Um, so there's this, this expression, isn't there, that says assumption is the mother of all. Yeah, you know the expression? It's rude. I'm not allowed to say that for sure. Um, so the question is, why do we end up with so many assumptions? And often it is because we've got all these blind spots because people are not in a solid feedback culture. So we're not sharing information enough. I'm going to talk about a CEO here that's called Jeff. <laughs> OK. Um, now, Jeff came and he says, I, I have very high EQ. Fair enough. Right? He said, yeah, very high EQ, self-declared. I really know how people feel. And he said, I'm giving a lot of feedback. You know, I keep giving feedback and I've told people till I'm blue in the face what matters. I keep saying it. They're just not listening. I'm giving feedback loads. Now you can see what's going on, hopefully. Um, but it gets worse. Um, whenever Jeff himself got feedback, what he did, because he's so got so much EQ, showed listening, showed that he already knew what they'd said and demonstrated that he had already fixed it or addressed it. And guess what? People had stopped giving him feedback. So this story for me is classic, right? And I know that sounds a bit extreme and none of us wants to feel like we're a Jeff, but feedback is not about the beautiful script, the delivery of feedback. You can vomit words out <laughs> and really not relate, not drive any improvement. It really comes from the, the, the way your mindset, the way you think about it. So Jeff, to his enormous credit, because from his starting point, this was a very long, long journey. He actually got that you can't opt out of being a role model. So he did initiate this really from the top down. He got into what we call the open minded and action oriented space and he made a massive effort to thank and validate people. Um, and what he did is he sh made a shift that the team got on board to make feedback very purposeful and about improvement, not about blame. And he unlocked this powerful new feedback culture, making it not significant, but easy, regular, and not having waste and guessing, but trust. And that was just a really, really big transformation. Now, to generalize this from our experience, and I think we've done more than 40 workshops with exec teams on the topic of feedback in the last couple of years, um, with scale up leaders. The big breakthrough is when leaders receive feedback well. And the way that you do that is about mindsets. It's not script or technique. It's about you thinking about taking on that feedback. So asking yourself here, you are a role model, you can't opt in either. If somebody gives you feedback, it's happened to all of us, somebody gives you feedback that is say, badly formed, emotive, unjustified, rubbishly packaged or whatever right um do they experience a reaction from you that deters them from ever risking such a thing again you need people to be able to give imperfect feedback if feedback's going to flow in the business and the best way to make that permitted and acceptable and celebrated is for you to show that that's what happens so that's the first step and i, I would i would love to go on more about feedback um but i won't because I'm not the time that I've told thing about feedback but there's also a lot of really good tips I've, again I keep referring to these little manuals we've got um a lot of a lot of what I've just talked about is expanded in detail this one's called fresh feedback um so there we go okay 
so there's my whistle stop tour through the top the top four <laughs> um so what are you going to do about it now which areas are you going to work on i promise that you weren't going to take away hundreds of actions you're now going to do a massive ruthless deprioritization so some of you will have already done the leadership readiness check um others of you depending on when you're listening to this as well if it's later will be able to stop and do it now um we will also attach the link for the leadership readiness check to this so that's the um, assessment that you can make using a diagnostic tool horizon 37 diagnostic tool uh, of your current readiness to lead the scale up in these 18 areas right so it takes nine minutes to do and once you've done that then you can compare your score to average scores so let me show you now um if there's if we can share the next slide the slide that has the average scores and i'll talk about what you've got here so uh, from the bottom up, you've got the overall score. So that's the average that the participants in the leadership readiness check tool have had is 70%. So if you're above 70%, you're ahead of the curve. And then you see a breakdown into these different areas. So the components you'll recognize, creating culture, direction setting, performance management, giving and receiving feedback, they are number two, three, four, so 68, 76, 769. See how you stack up. Mindset, I will talk about in a little bit, that's also super important. And then you've got the 14 other components there at 69. So the, the standard output that you'll get will amalgamate your 14. We call them the tail components and give you that. Now, only if your score is super low in that one, would we recommend you then disaggregate out and look at those in the first instance, because there's plenty to do in the first four. OK, so uh, look at your report. Check out where you're below the bar. Get very ruthless in your prioritisation and fix the gaps, not when disaster looms, but now um, before the outcome, business outcomes really get uh, at risk. Um, so I have a very practical thing I'd like you to suggest to suggest that you do uh, in this particular moment. So remember, I said there's thousands of things that you could choose to do. There's also loads of higher level of detail that you could get to after you finished hearing this um, this seminar now. Um, and you could analyse to really, really understand what's driving your readiness. But right now, I invite you to choose just three things. They may not be the perfect three things, but committing to three things now that you really will do is the is the quick win available right now. So and the way to do that, I suggest, is that you choose one thing that you will do in the next two days. It could be anything that you've heard from this research that you think will step up the leadership in your business in a relevant way. So the next two days. The second thing is something you'll do in the next two weeks. And the third thing in two months. So have a go now, write down three things that you're ready to take on as a leader in your business. And if you wanted to be uh, super holding yourself to account, you could post that in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, in all, all sorts of ways you can hold yourself to account. You can make yourself a little selfie video on your phone and send it to a mentor. Um, or you can post it into the WhatsApp group that you have with some peers or something like that. But anyway, get try and take three things from today that you really are going to commit to doing. And be ruthless with yourself. Of course, you could do loads more things. But if you get those three things done, then you've taken the first step. Um, OK. A uh, final thing I was going to um, ask you to think about was that this is not a solo sport. Um, obviously, you have a team of people, whether they are mostly made out of formal formal colleagues, direct reports or employed people within your business, or whether they are more of a virtual group, virtual team of um uh, supporters and advisors or, or, co or contractors or people who have no formal links but you know they really are a member of your team all of those people you want to enroll in this you cannot go alone with creating leadership it's kind of an oxymoron right so if you imagine you're trying to mobilize the leaders around you around your priorities and create what we we use an expression we say create a business full of leaders and remember the definition is generating positive results through others you're winning. So thinking about how you might get your fellow leaders on board, it might be worth checking out some of these signs that we see. Um, we, we see these in teams that are ready to go on the journey, regardless of where you start. It doesn't matter if all your scores here are on 
10, right? If you have these things in place, you're going to rocket them up. So here's a few things that you might want to consider. So first is that leadership is seen across your team as an important enabler of success. People are bought into the idea that being leaders and stepping up is important. The leaders are aligned and they communicate consistently as such about what things matter. They have the right motivation and conviction lined up with what the business is trying to achieve themselves. They also have a load of traits like integrity. That means doing what you say you'll do, put simply. Responsibility, um, really good stakeholder management and a willingness to be very careful about relationships and stakeholder management. There's a, a really important thing to look out for, which is that your team has a high regard for each other. So we often see teams that are um, they, their default is to trust and um, value each other, even if they're not clear about what the um, that the particular thing they should be doing is. They expect success from each other. And that is very, very healthy and very empowering. Um, they tend to get the important things done first and fast. They also know that they are not the finished article and I think that's probably the one thing we look for when we think about what, which teams stand to benefit the most from Horizon 37 programs is that they're up for it they know they're not the finished article and that's not a threat it's not something that needs to be justified by the way we can take the slides off now I just realized that we don't need that um, so they're ready they're ready to go on this journey and they, they're up for it um, if you wanted to check out some of those things. You can also try using this, the fitness test, which is on the Horizon 37 website. And that looks at all those that we call them the leading indicators. So there's, and there's a version that's free on our website you can try out to see whether you are in the game together and ready to address some of these things. So yeah, I think I'll probably leave it there because I've definitely talked for longer than I had intended in the formal part. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'll leave you with a, a call to action, which is take the best bits. I've done, I've covered so much. Take the best bits that really resonate with you. Use them in your business and become one of the one in 25 that succeeds in the scale up. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Oh, that was brilliant. Thank you so much for, for running through all of that. It was, it was, it was tons. There was tons of got uh, You told me to talk about a lot, cover a lot. Yeah, no, 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 so much. And, and it didn't feel like it went on at all. So, um, no, was, and, the, and the jokes were good. I mean, uh, really? yeah, they, they, passed, they passed the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were good. They were good. Okay. Um, <laughs> but thank <laughs> you so much for that. Well, uh, we'll, we'll go into um, a bit of a QA now. Someone's actually, just before we get into the questions, there's been lots of questions that have been posted in. So, um, be good to sort of get your get your oh, gosh, okay. thoughts on those um but also um just before that just got off the back of what you were just saying someone has shared their um their their actions with us oh, so i don't know oh. if you wanted to just do okay i can't, I can't see that I can't you see can't that. see that well, I've, got, I've got this i've got them here so I, I can maybe read them to you so, oh my gosh um, thank you and well done you're a winner so to, at, at two days they've yep. uh they've gone uh, asked for input about our culture to, to immediate action they're doing two weeks yep. Yep. hear everyone in the team express their thoughts about our culture um see how aligned um we are and then two months reflect on performance management see how to improve it wow so pretty good you're on track for success <laughs> there we go there we go good stuff but that's it's, accountability it's... luca read it out <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's, it's, it's on it's recorded here now so um but yeah, no, so I just wanted to share that with you. So I don't know if you um, wanted to make any comments on that, but we'll, we'll move into a Q and A. Um, I guess just before I'm going to add in another question into the mix here, but something for myself, it was just it, through everything that you were talking about, it is a decision-making sort of felt like a, a theme that pops up through in, in each of those things. Like, you know, yeah. even yeah. asking someone to take a risk is you, you're making a decision there yourself. So um I wondered if there was any any thoughts on decision making as a leader that, that you. Yeah, I, I wondered all. whether I should do a fifth topic on that. So obviously we did culture, we did second direction, we did performance management, we did feedback, which came out of the research at the top. But in the last year, since also since we published the research, I I would say that decision making is the 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 kind of fifth close follower, right? Um, so. We've um, yeah, let me let me say a little about decision making the, the big breakthrough around decision making is actually choosing deliberately which decisions deserve time and attention. So it's very we will often do time boxing for task execution, but 
time boxing in like making decisions, some of them just torture us and go round and round and round in our head for ages and just keep coming up every team meeting, right? But they're not necessarily the ones that we deliberately want to put time and attention to. So the first thing in that is teams being able to together go, okay, which decisions are the biggest impact on our business and therefore the most important? Which are the most complex and difficult? Which ones are the most urgent? And looking at those things to actually prioritise their decisions and coming up with maybe a log yeah there's so that's that's one thing which is really important and the other time related issue is that often again the decision is more about when to make it than the actual decision itself so say we said okay we're going to gather more information we could always gather more information before making any decision and stall and stall and stall right but we might say in a month we're going to have a hell of a lot better information so that's an appropriate amount of stalling because if we made it now we'd be hasty because we're going to find out some new stuff so we decided that it's a month we're going to make that decision until then we'll gather information but we're not going to like mull over that decision stress about it the whole of that month it will come up we'll make it so timing in that regard is also incredibly important and then there's I mean there's lot, lots of other things it's being rigorous in knowing what the question is exactly before you go into soapbox analysis and debate that's super important too and then capturing the decision unambiguously and assigning ownership for implementation is really important a lot of that um and then if there's one thing that you you could do immediately now is to make sure that the decision rights are clear in your team sometimes you forget as you're scaling that the the founder or, or the CEO doesn't need to make every single decision anymore. And it keeps sort of squirting back up to them. And it, it, it's not, I mean, it, you know, it's both sides playing that game, right? The CEO and, and the lead, and the other leaders. So own, being clear on decision rights is also super important. I realise I probably talked too long about decision, decision making now, but I do also think it's right up there just behind those other four areas. So thanks for asking that question. No, 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 no worries at all. No, no, no. It felt, felt like something that, um, you know, I, I, I certainly benefit from what you just said there as well. So, so thanks for covering it off. Um, great. So we've got lots of questions to get through. So we'll, we'll yeah. get through those now. Um, just to let everyone else know, that we, we have got until the end of the hour. So if you have any more questions that come off the back of this, please still continue to put those through. We'll, we'll, we'll get through these as quickly as possible and, and use this time wisely with Katie that we have now. So um, let's start number one. So uh, how do we know if our efforts to step up leadership are working? Yeah. That's actually really important. Um, that you don't let anybody get away with hand waving stuff that it's all soft stuff and can't be tracked. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. not true. Um, obviously, it is um, the holy grail of being able to say we improved our decision making and therefore our revenue has increased by X or um, we uh, created a great culture that has improved trust and speeded up iteration and therefore we've achieved an IPO right the, the, the connection is case by case quite difficult to make but one of the great things yeah. that this research did was look at what in a general case the right components of leadership are that do correlate with business outcomes so what what you can look at is whether you're improving your performance on these 18 components now again some of the things are, you know, how how much do people feel aligned on a decision, right? That's a difficult thing to have a, a, me a quantitative measure on. But if you're asking, if you're saying, we, you know, if you're doing a staff survey and you're asking on a scale of one to five, how aligned are the leadership on decisions? And you're seeing a trend in the positive direction on that, then you are being rigorous and tracking it. And that's the thing, you know, I, I really... Um, discourage people from shying away from any sort of tracking just because you don't have the perfect tracking so ask the questions keep your finger on the pulse constantly prioritize constantly adapt what you're doing but expect to have it all deliver on the business results that you've articulated in what we did at the very beginning of the, of the seminar um, oh sorry one other thing is um, it's also important to track progress and not just absolute performance because some of these things are quite hard to calibrate so if you say as a leadership team we've made really high progress in creating a clear identity for this team that gives the business confidence in the exec team and we think we've all made high progress on that that's brilliant right those are obviously more difficult to say on a scale of one to five how much are we, are we of that great team identity right so progress is also important to look at fantastic thank you very much so um well answered um what is the single most important thing that we must get right in leadership um so that's a, bit of a tricky I, question well i mean i did say earlier i i do have um 
quite a strong emphasis on alignment. Mm -hmm. So if you've got more or less people that need to be on the same page, pulling in the same direction, then lots and lots of other things become possible mm -hmm. um, that can be completely trashed. So I, I would say alignment is is right up there. In terms yeah. of leadership in general, um, and this is an entirely another topic, um, but it, it is, is it, knowing which strengths you have and how to deploy them is super important. So if I was to ask you, um, do you know who Dina, Dina Asher-Smith is? She's the greatest, greatest British printer okay. of all time, right? And if I was to ask you, what is she good at? She she is the fastest British printer of all time. What do you think her strengths are? Smooth printing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So running fast. Yeah. Yeah. She's good at starting. Right. She's actually yeah. very good at peaking as well. She runs her fastest race at the time. Her strengths are exactly aligned with what she's doing. Right. right? And then if I said to you, what's Dina not very good at? Uh not sure <laughs> we don't know we don't care because she's doing she's playing to her strengths and it's unfortunately i suppose in the late 90s a lot of people got into this whole thing of like rounded leader and mm -hmm. tortured people to work on their weaknesses and to look at you know how to improve their gaps and reach the bar and become rounded and it was just absolute rubbish if you look through history great leaders and great performers know and play to their strengths they don't fix their limit they don't fix their weaknesses unless they're limiting weaknesses that's another story um, but I think that that's got to be a really important ethos in growing leadership in a business that's scaling and growing so quickly. It's just got to be strengths focused. Otherwise, you're crippling yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It does. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's a lot of this I feel like can take to life as well in general. <laughs> yeah, but that's another, <laughs> another conversation. Um, how can I we can avoid making mistakes? In, you can, you can. I can see uh, them coming up now. Yeah. 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 So how can we avoid mistakes in hiring? Correct. Okay. Um, I actually I have thought about this. Um, so I think that so the first thing I'll say is to map the landscape so you actually know where you're competing for key hires. Um, look outside as well as just what you need, and then think very hard about um, like targeted hiring according to where the short where the short the important bits of your business are and the shortages in the landscape so some roles will be really easy to hire for you want to put your effort into the ones that the land that the market is really tough for um the um the next thing I, i'd say I, I like to compare em, employer branding a bit like if you wanted to go on a date with somebody then do you think that you'd be more likely to attract the right date by going to the gym and pumping some iron looking really hot or going onto tinder and spending five hours scrolling through people right so employer brand is super important as well and by that i mean how the world sees your business um and and if you can't really fake it that you need to it needs to come from culture so it's inextricably linked with culture but if you're able to put an employer brand out there take the going to the gym pumping iron approach rather than this sort of you know sifting through 10,000 cvs on a, on a platform that's also going to serve you well and be a higher roi the other thing i i have to mention about hiring is that it, it is a, a really good enabler of difference in a business so at least half of our work is about unleashing the differences that are there <laughs> but if you can also get the business better at recognizing the value of difference beyond the obvious you know we do this exercise called dimensions of difference where we have we, we've done it tens of times in the last year where we get a cohort or a team to identify the relevant dimensions of difference in that team and it's not the protected characteristics it's things like you know where what kind of how strong my, my identity is versus chameleon it's things like uh, was that did i go to the university life of life or was i a, a qualification junkie um it, it it's it's do i like getting up early in the morning or working late in the evening like those are the the things that people come up with when you actually ask them what means something to them and being able to hire for obviously diversity of thought is the really biggest prize in this stage of your business if you can hire with a better ability to spot those differences and welcome them and then not accidentally getting sidetracked by conflating confidence with competence or youth with innovation or all those other sorts of things then you're also onto a winner and uh, that's probably all i'll say about hiring 
<laughs> <Five minutes. laughs> good. Yeah, we're, 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 all, we're all running low on time, but that was, uh, it was great. Thank you. Well answered again. So um, how can we get mentoring, coaching, uh, other help? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, there feels like a, a bit of a platform. Horizon 37. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I will tell you, we have an event coming up in Harwell. So I'm mm-hmm. going to plug Harwell too. So one of mm-hmm. our partners is, is Harwell. Um, in near Oxford and uh, there's an event called Don't Waste Your Time which is with a group of peer CEOs to to be coached through a lot of these questions around deprioritization results focus and making really tangible for their business so that's a very specific thing um, that presumably we can share some information about that um, there's um, I mean yeah I feel really bad answering this question because I'm like come and talk to us there are many other sources of helpful support available but we have a team of leadership partners that specialized in all these areas that's it that's it that's it i mean you got you guys are specialists in this there, there is also others out there so you know there, there is lots of support out there barclays likewise the, the in yeah. Eagle labs we, we do offer mentoring and support there's yeah. there's lots of support out there for mentoring and um I believe people will receive a link following this to to maybe book in and 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 get a, a session with yourself potentially after this yeah. as well. So I'm a, I'm you know. mentoring is incredibly important. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone should have a mentor. We did a, a workshop earlier this week with a most brilliant cohort of mentors from the Royal Academy of Engineering, who are all super impressive about being valuable about finding and, dis- and deploying their unique value for maximum return on investment of the time they're putting into mentoring mentoring is game changing you, you should have a mentor and you should also be very clear about their role in mentoring and championing you so be explicit about them opening doors making connections you know supporting you in that way too yeah, agreed um, right quick questions. real quick for yeah. i think yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, any tips on how to set up the right company culture um We've I don't think I've got anything else. I think I've given you my best on that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, what if we are completely distracted by getting funding and grants? I think that's a, a very fair oh, question. It's that's um, yeah, really, yeah. I mean, I, I, if we were doing a show of hands, I, I'd expect a lot of people would find that really difficult balance. Mm-hmm. It's a very difficult funding landscape. If you're in an investment round at the moment or, or you're trying to apply for grant funding, there's a lot of competition, a lot, a lot more demand on the process of, of doing that at the moment um i mean other than the deprioritization which we've talked about to, today which is really getting a grip on what is going to make the difference to your success um there's probably an investing in resilience point i'd make um so when resilience is not about being bulletproof and weathering the storm it's about deploying yourself on your a game where it matters and not your b game 24 7 and with that kind of mindset you then get much better at saying no you can see yourself as this finite valuable and cherished resource that needs to deliver performance then you can start to cherish that resource make sure it's good where it needs to be mm-hmm. and that's often what you need i mean it's it's a complex psychological thing here everyone says oh look after yourself invest in your well-being but actually if you believe truly that your performance is going to be increased by taking care of you the resource that often is a, a real um magical unlock <laughs> this when you're dealing with all that stuff but uh, you know you have my you have my sympathy it's tough Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what to do when misalignment happens, uh, how to correct course and set clear direction again? Mm-hmm. Well, the first thing to do on that is to call it out. So if you're starting to diverge, which often happens, situation change, market changes, new things come up, even if the personalities don't change, which they probably do, um, it's calling it out. It's then being able to listen to the different perspectives about what people want and really, really listen. Think about people's interests rather than positions. So that's a negotiation jargon where interest is the things that actually matter to me. It, you know, I, I want to have a really exciting life, right? Mm-hmm. My position might be, 
I'm only going to work a three day week. Right. If you can actually get underneath it and think, why is that my position? And get people to explain their interests and what matters to them. You then have a good chance of rebuilding alignment in your business. And the, the typical situation is between groups of founders, isn't it? When, you know, you, you actually need to have those yeah. conversations and having external support can sometimes be important when things are really not being able to be said to actually help people coach people to articulate for each other rather than being represented but coach them to say what matters to them so that you can then actually rebuild a common direction and ambition um and start to reline up on what matters and pivots happen just do it on purpose if you yeah, do absolutely. <laughs> absolutely right last one we could we, we're nearly done here um uh sorry we're clearly not the best when it comes to feedback in our company do you have any recommendations as to how to address this issue mm, mm, mm. um well, uh, the thing I mentioned in my um, short story there is I think what comes to the heart of it, the first thing you need to do is to think about your own mindset when you receive feedback and then talk about that authentically with your team. So some, for example, I got a good, good recent one we did. One of our leadership partners talked about her inner gorilla and it and how when someone gives her feedback, she wants to make them look stupid, <laughs> prove they're wrong. And she shared that. And actually that opened up then a conversation within this exact team where the people were able to talk about their own mindsets and how they wanted to be open to feedback and action oriented, but they had these blocks. So I'd say as a first access to creating a feedback culture, that's the kind of work that you can do is to it's, yeah. it's, it's all about role modeling and it's about creating the mindset of course there then we have another company we're working with at the moment who have gamified feedback which is really fun that that and that yeah. came from the ground up they actually had um people in the business went look we're going to start this cool new very geeky though tech company very geeky way to track and give people stars for different types of feedback conversations and for them that worked but anyway i'm getting into a bit a bit over the top here i'll nice. leave it there <laughs> Thank you so much. No, that's great. That's great. And look, yeah, we're, we're, we're over time. So apologies, everybody. But um, but there's lots to take away there and there was lots to get through. So thank you so much for, for getting through all of that, Katie, because there's, thank there's you lots so to take much. away, everybody. Yes, um, and here you go. Here's how to follow up with us. We're, we're quite active on LinkedIn and we try to share useful bite-sized chunk information and guidance, guidance and tips there. So we'd love to see some of you there. Yeah, perfect. And so people can reach out to you on uh, LinkedIn and 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 uh, through the website. Did you say that there there was going to be a link that goes out to everybody following this? Is that was that right? Was I right in that? And they'll be able to look up, um, uh, be able to book in a session. Is that is that a thing? Yes, yes. So I think as well as doing the leadership readiness check, um, which we've we've got that link included. If people wanted to book in with a twenty minute debrief coaching on that to get under the mm -hmm. skin of what the priorities yep. are for their business to really deprioritize and focus and laser yep. on those things, we'd be really delighted to do that. And there are okay. some slots available. Okay, amazing, amazing. And if you're watching this in a year's time, uh, that that link might be inactive. But for those of you on on with us today, then uh, you can you can utilize that, and it'll, you'll receive that with follow up and a replay of this session as well. So thank you, Katie. Thank you so much for for joining us for this today. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, you know, if you need any further support around supporting your business and things like this, if you're looking at scaling your business and leadership, we we have lots of scale up programs that we'll be running over the course of uh, of the next year, and and uh, lots of information and support if you haven't checked out labs.uk.barclays already as well so um yeah that's enough from us we've gone way over so again thank you so much katie um and uh, have a great day everybody thank you